Boss of Blades. Hello, this is Boss Blades here, and today we are going over Talaria's Panharmonicon Miss List from four months ago. Uh, Talaria has basically not been playing the game since April, and more or less after the Gareth meta that happened in March. But uh, we decided to scroll through Discord and find his old list, and this is what we have been using to ladder for our reset this month. So it's uh, pretty close to its standard list. It is a bit ambitious, and it doesn't run Love Waves, Day of Judgment. Uh, a lot of its removal is more or less just single clear. Uh, we are running the land uh, Woodland Hermitage. Uh, a lot of the time in the aggressive meta, you want up switching it to Sacred Sanctum for the ability to heal and so get the mana jam. Uh, then, of course, we have two Chandler of Might. It's just almost always a 3 3 or 1 in uh, this missile list and many other list lists. This particular build has seven creatures that have the threshold of five power or greater for Chandler of Might. So you're more likely to be able to flip it into a 3-3. And of course you have Burns Paradise, gives you a mana, and it's one drop. Scion of Ashaya. What's different about this list is it only runs one copy of Scion of Ashaya, but a lot of the time it is actually all you will need. And Scion is just, uh, you want to draw it late game, drop it, it's a really big dude, and then you can take off the remainder of your opponent's health when you use him. Then we have two copies of Rampant Growth, simple two mana, gain an extra mana jam. Then for the two drops, we have one Elvish Archer, as two four for two with reach. As two four for two with reach, it is able to block flyers. It's able to block a lot of the early game that Chandra and Garrett can also throw at you. And of course, it's good against Yang Ling, who could potentially be a bad matchup some of the time. Uh, then we have Cool Mean Tusker, just a simple 4 3 for 2 as a simple 1 of. He's just a very good early game drop, and you could run Treetop over him instead, which may be more effective for the current meta where people are running Inlady Lairs and stuff. Uh, one of the ambitious cards here is Panharmonicon, which can trigger the debut of a creature we summon this turn again. And as you see, there's a lot of debuts in this that are very strong to give a trigger multiple times, such as your Crater Huffs, your Crushing Worms, or you can even just do it for Tristani, you can use it for the Mist Raven, or the Daybreak to go to clear multiple creatures using Panharmonicon in the same turn. And we have Gadstaff Agitators, who's the 3 1 for 3, gives you a mana. If you have two at the end of your turn, then it will flip and give you another mana. Very strong card. I potentially believe that it does deserve a nerf, specifically because of the way it interacts with Nissa, where it winds up healing you for two and allowing you to drop stuff super duper early, such as when you turn five Crater or Bohemoth or turn six Crush Worms. And really strong card, uh, probably a staple in 99% of your Nissa list outside of the deck that I built, which was Caddy's Claws. And we have one Hermit of the Flock, some of the Sheep. Turns into a 4-4, four, four, heals you 2 for 3. Very good. Turn 5 play, uh, but you can just use it early to drop multiple blockers on the field on turn 3. Draga Druid, arguably one of the strongest cards in the game, and definitely for Nessa, where it is a 3-4 three, for 3, and every time you get a mana gem that is not from your land, you draw a card. There is a number of ways to do that, along with the Birds of Paradise. You have the Gas of Agitators to draw two cards. You have Tristrani who can give you a gem, and you have Primeval Titan who can also give you a gem on both debut and attack. Then we are running two Pixie Tricksters, three one for four, flying. He turns and then any creature into a giant frog. That is a three three with no abilities. Uh, very good counter for Liliana, which Talaria absolutely hates Liliana and thinks that it is a scummy luck based deck. His words, not mine. I absolutely love Liliana, as you may know, uh, based on my track record using uh, Casino Liliana. Then we have two copies of Daybreak Ranger, who is a 4 3 for 4 with Reach and Ward, and on debut, Tamari Creature. 
And then when you flip to the Moonlight, you will deal damage to the marked creature equal to this creature's power. You're able to clear multiple high power things uh, with combining Panharmonicon and Crater Health Behemoth, and also just Panharmonicon and Daybreak Ranger to go to clear multiple five top or less creatures using your Daybreak Ranger. Then we have one copy of Miss Raven, yet another nod to being able to deal with Casino Liliana, which is a 3 3 for 5, looks fine, and debut to return an enemy creature to its hand. It is very strong for dealing with your opponent's board with Panharmonicon, as well as a massive tempo play, and usually a game ender along with Panharmonicon. It also does fly, and with the Crater Hook Behemoth, it can be a 5 5. 17 fire, which is very powerful to play. Then we have Tristani, who is a 5 5 for 5, that gives us one of three abilities. We either get an empty mana gem, which does combine with Banner Monocon. We can summon two 1 1 soldiers to set up to buff them with a Crater Hope Behemoth, or we can heal ourselves and all of our creatures for 4, which is really good against Aggro decks. Then we have two copies of Primeval Titan, 7 7 for 6, with debut and attack. We gain an empty mana gem. Very strong card, especially when you were able to play it as early as turn four up against that agitators when going second. And also just one of the best ways to just give raw mana gems while also being an under cost creature for his power and toughness. Now we have arguably one of the strongest cards in the deck is Crater of Behemoth, which is a 5-5 five, five for 8 with haste. And when you play it, it gives your other creatures and creatures in your hand plus two plus two. Along with the Panharmonicon, that actually will give a plus four plus four buff as early as potentially turn five if you have a combination with Gas Staff Agitators, Panharmonicon, and Crater Hook Behemoth. But arguably the strongest card it combines with is Primal Summoning, which is a nine mana spell that draws four cards, but the next creature you play this turn costs zero. So we're able to get to nine mana. Primal Summoning, play your Crater Hook, and if you have Panharmonicon out, it will buff both creatures uh, for four in stats, as well as drawing the four additional cards from Primal Summoning to make a massive board, and potentially massive later boards. Then, of course, there is two copies of Crushing Worms. A lot of this list now are only running one copy of Crushing Worms, because your opponent can deal with one copy, then two copies is usually enough to take your opponent out. In this particular deck, uh, it is made to be able to go over the top of other Nist lists. So if you crush a worms after Crater Hoof or before Crater Hoof, and then you Crater Hoof before Crater Monocon, it will be 10 pens, which is very difficult for players to deal with unless they're running the card Epitome of Might. Uh, so we are currently about 1900. We're more than likely going to hit Mythic utilizing this list later today. And Talaria actually reminded me of this list in the MTGSS Discord when he proceeded to slap my Ajani list to OMB in a practice game. So I went up finding the list and decided to test it on the current ladder and it is actually performing uh, very effectively. Though we did not face against any Liliana or Garrett, so keep that in mind, those are two matchups that are very challenging for this particular list of Nissa. So if you like this video, please give this video a like. And if you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section down below. And thank you and have a great day.